You're watching Inside Utah Politics. Time now to debate some of the big stories of the week with the Inside Utah Politics panel. This week we have State Senator Luz Escamilla and former Hinckley Institute Director Kirk Jowers. So great to have the two of you on the show. Thanks so much Thank for being you. here. Thank you. Uh, a pretty big week. Utah continues to draw attention from White House candidates, those seeking the presidency. Uh, Elizabeth Warren really kind of stirred up some controversy, though, with a public lands plan that she rolled out. Uh, no drilling, no more fossil fuel leases, and that really drew ire from those that represent those areas. Let's start with you, Senator. Do you like her plan? I think the most important thing of this conversation has to do with local control. A great reminder that the current president went ahead and did this executive order against, I think, the will of the locals. And with San Juan County having those changes on their leadership, I think it just showed that local control is important. They're, you know, they're backing down from that lawsuit. And um, to me, whether it comes from a Democrat or Republican, Local control is important when it comes to the stewardship of the land, and we should be focusing on that. Kirk, let's bring you in. Uh, the, our local representatives, those, uh, again, Representative Curtis and uh, Stewart, said this is an example of why someone from the East Coast shouldn't be coming to Utah and telling us how to run our lands. Right, and I, that, to me, the only better response would just completely ignore her. She came to Utah for one reason, uh, to raise money with the, in some more extreme environmental groups. She has no clear grasp of the Constitution and how that actually works. I mean, the whole thing from President Obama to President Trump to where we are now is not the way it was ever contemplated. Um, but for me, it was just a nothing. I mean, she has no real power or probably inclination to do anything about it, but it will score a few points and she raised a few dollars here and then she'll move on and forget about it. What about those constitutional questions and acting unilaterally in that way? I don't think that's the right approach. I'm coming from uh, the legislative branch. I think Congress needs to act, but there's also been, you know, a lot of things happening with Escalante and barriers. And I think it's time also to, again, take it back to the people in that area. And I think in Utah, even though maybe divisive amongst the political ideological perspective, those people that live there, I think they've been very outspoken of what they want. Representative Curtis says extremes are running this discussion. Is there room to meet in the middle? Is there room for development and uh, preservation? Absolutely. I mean, the Antiquities Act was meant to uh, was meant to protect things, uh, but not to to close off just kind of indiscriminately millions of acres unless there happened to be enough to do it. And um, President Obama's executive order clearly was ridiculous overreach. Uh, President Trump tried to to bring it back a little bit um, as as our senator here is telling us there are some some improvements that could be made there um, so maybe there's still something in between what what the two our two presidents have done obama and, and trump yeah talk about that what about the danger of a republican getting in and doing one thing and then a democrat getting in and doing another do we just need a legislative fix here Absolutely. more of that can't happen well and i think that's the problem with congress and washington is can congress just get their act together and move forward with decisions and they're tough uh, we do it here in Utah every year in, during our legislative session, and it's not all through the governor. So I, I'm always concerned about executive orders, and in this case, I think this is a, a prime example of why we need to move forward with Congress making a decision. Let's move on to the, did you have a thought there? Well, just, just that she's right. I mean, the thing that everyone... Well, that's no fun. You're not supposed <laughs> to agree. I know, you got the wrong person. I, I love her. So, uh, but, but the thing that that you know local people that business folks that whatever we all hate the most is uncertainty and this right. type of ping pong yeah. uh, executive action is tough because you can never plan once you know it's there you you kind of figure your life out but if you know it can just change it's really tough okay uh, let's uh, go with her visit here and get into the 2020 race for president a huge democratic field who do you like as the top candidates? You know, I, I think it's too early to call. There's like 20 people in the race, but we had Julian Castro visiting Utah, which was very exciting. Mm -hmm. I personally know him and his brother and had worked with them in projects before. So I, you know, I like Julian, but you have everything from very old school Democrats like, you know, um, Biden to <laughs> very new younger people like Castro and others that have thrown their names out there. I think it's too early uh, to call, but I think it just, it's the right message for Democrats. We are excited to see the base, uh, mm -hmm. you know, energize. Um, people are like, well, too many will be problematic. I think too many is good sometimes to get all those different perspectives. And I'm excited to see what happens and welcome them to Salt Lake City when they come here. Your thoughts on who the top Democratic candidates could potentially be? 
Well, I mean, too many candidates gave us President Trump. So, yeah. uh, you know, that could very easily happen on the Democratic side. You see this radicalization by a certain segment of these candidates. Um, but if you get a big enough base, that 15 to 20 percent, that's how Trump kind of developed the mm -hmm. momentum. And uh, you think no way could it ever be Senator Warren <laughs> or, uh, or Bernie Sanders. Uh, but if you divide it enough, you slice it thin enough, they have a chance. And then, you know, Republicans are in the same spot that Democrats were in 16. All my Democratic friends were saying, oh, I hope Trump gets the nomination because he's the only guy Clinton could ever win. <laughs> and, uh, but then he beat Clinton. Right. So, so Republicans have to be careful if they're wishing for Warren or, uh, or Sanders and thinking that's, those are the people uh, Trump could win. Who in the field would be most likely to beat President Trump? Oh. I mean, I'm thinking right now anyone, but again, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's going to be tough, but I think it's people that really are talking to the middle class Americans and okay. more in, I think more in the middle than this radical to, your, mm -hmm. to the points that were made before. I agree completely. Uh, you know, the one that's been interesting to me from the start is uh, California Senator Harris. I think she mm -hmm. is really interesting. Um, so I'm watching to see if she's going to get pull to the left or if she's going to to try to try to stick in that middle lane with you know Cory Booker who uh, is getting pulled a little bit there's there's a few that uh, become that were interesting but are becoming I think less interesting and so we'll see if they can resist these these pressures right now which right. are seismic all right we'll watch that another thing we're watching is the 2020 governor's race of course no one well there are some people officially in but a lot of big names not officially in yet how do you see this playing out? Who are the top candidates that you see will be in the race? I, I don't know. <laughs> this is getting interesting <laughs> by, by the day. This almost sounds like a mayoral race. But, um, <laughs> you know, just I think, um, you know, Governor Herbert said that this will be his last term, but you never you should never say never. Yeah. So who knows there? Of course, Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox, um, former Speaker of the House, Greg Hughes. But then Huntsman's name came up. Um, in the Democratic side, we... I think we're organizing to try to find uh, a good, strong candidate. Because as you said, you know, when you divide, you can conquer as well. And um, <laughs> so, you know, it, I don't know, it's, it's really early, I think, but people are getting their camps together. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a lot with some of the people that I know in, in the Republican side, especially. Kirk, Kirk, there's no doubt that while they're not officially in, they're in right now, right? Right. So <coughs> Spencer Cox, you, you, you put in the in category. Mm -hmm. uh, by former Speaker Greg Hughes, you put in there. Um, uh, interesting people who I don't think are as in as, as those two. Uh, oh, well, Jeff Burningham also, the right. Silicon. He's officially Slopes, in. Slopes, he's officially in. Uh, so they're, they're in that category. Then you have people like Greg Miller, um, who's very interesting. Oh. Um, and because you know his family has such an amazing name here. And uh, so what's he going to do? And then of course, Huntsman really is the bull in the China shop that takes all of the analysis back out and, and yeah let's talk about that if if he's in does he win that race if i had to bet uh probably i bet i bet I, you don't bet against john Hunter <laughs> probably Jr. maybe is what we're getting <laughs> out of I this would, race but, but it's okay. not it's not a clean shot i mean mm -hmm. certainly he's got the name id he's got the financial resources experience he's, he's got the experience the yeah. um he he looks like he's straight out of central casting to be the governor <laughs> of a state um but you know he did leave his second term to to work for obama now mm -hmm. he works for trump so maybe that part is forgiven by some of the right right wingers and um uh you know there's a lot that's kind of gone on with him since then so i don't think it's it's a hundred percent but he's certainly the front runner okay Absolutely. a few seconds left do you, if he's in does he win i think so i mean i i think people like him moderates like him mm -hmm. independents like him just because of and his history at he has continued to build in that history of being someone of consensus building All and right. i think that helps him a lot we have to end it on that note great conversation thanks so much for thank being you. here appreciate your time thank you stay with us we'll be right back with more inside utah politics right after the break